Johanna. Johanna. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I am doing a tutorial and this tutorial is how I made my quilted cards. So I've shown you these before in previous videos. This is what they look like. So they just have a very quilty look even though they're not technically quilted. They really have that look to them and these are a digital download in my Etsy shop and you guys really liked them so I thought I'd make a tutorial and show you how I made them. They're very very easy to make but they look really effective as like little pockets or little journal cards or whatever you want to use them for really. So the first thing you're going to need is some cardstock. It doesn't really matter even what colour cardstock you have because most of it is going to be covered but I've got this yellow cardstock and you want to cut this down to the size you want to make your quilted card or whatever it is that you're making and I'm just going to cut this down to a 6x4 I'm just going to go ahead and do that so I've just cut that down to 6x4 again you can make yours whatever size that you want these ones that I did previously were 3x4 cards so this one's going to be a 6x4 so you just want to do that and then you also want to gather up a bunch of pattern pieces and that's what's going to make up your little quilt squares. So I like to use a variety of paper and fabric. I just like the different textures that it gives you when you mix the two together but you can do all paper or you can do all fabric or mix them up or do whatever you want. Um, I've just grabbed a couple of different fabrics here from my little fabric scrap stash and I've also just pulled some scrap papers from my scrap drawer. So this is a really great way to use up little leftover bits and pieces that you have. I won't get too much into detail about choosing um, the different patterns that you mix together, but a really easy way to do it so that you know it's going to look nice is to choose a colour and to choose all scraps um, within that colour. So all blues or all pinks or all yellows, that way you know that's really going to match. For example, this card I did a green theme. This card I chose bluish tones, um, this card I did pinks, and this one was kind of a mixture. But just to give you a bit of an idea of how they might look, if you choose a colour theme that's a really really easy way to make sure they match, but you can do whatever you like, you can make it mismatched. I've chosen a bunch of different colours here but they're mostly blues, greens and brown tones. So once you've gathered up a bunch of scraps to use, you want to determine what size squares you're going to cut them into. I would recommend cutting them into one by one inch squares like these. It's going to give it a nice effect to have lots of squares. The smaller you make the squares, the more squares you're going to have. So you can make them bigger and you can have less squares. It's totally up to you to customise it however you want. Like I said, my preference is one by one, so I'm going to go ahead and cut each of these into one by one. I'm probably going to do two or three squares of each fabric. I won't use them all because there won't be enough room, but it'll allow me to play around with the pattern. And you can cut these with your scissors and you can use a ruler to get it measured right, or you can use a paper trimmer. I'm going to use my trimmer just because it makes everything look really tidy and it makes it all match up um, and fit together really well, but you can definitely use scissors. So when you're cutting your fabrics, I just take a little square that I've already cut out of paper and just use that as like a template to cut out the square to the right size. I actually have put fabric through my trimmer before, but I think it bluntens the trimmer a bit, so I don't know, you probably shouldn't do that, um, but you can, it does work. But for these really small pieces, it's kind of hard to hold the fabric under the trimmer blade without it moving so I'm just going to use the paper to give me a template so that I can cut out the squares. And because we're making this like a quilt I think I think don't be too meticulous about it and measure things out too too much or like organize how many of each fabric you're going to want or how many of each paper pattern you're going to want and where each pattern is going to go too meticulously because I think that if you have it a little bit random that's just part of the quilty look that you want. That's what we're trying to achieve. So I think don't don't make it don't try and make it too perfect. I know that everyone has different methods of doing things and some people like to do it that way and that's what works for them. So I mean do what works for you, but this is a fun project that you definitely don't need to measure everything out perfectly for. So 
I don't. <laughs> okay, so I've cut out all of my squares. Um, if my maths is correct, I should need 24 squares to fill out this 6x4 card. So once you've cut out your squares, you want to take some adhesive. I'm going to use some wet glue. Use some wet glue. I'm using PVA glue. I've got it in like this little sauce bottle. But I like to use a wet glue because I'm using fabric and it works with both fabric and paper. So you can use whatever adhesive that you want. I'm actually just going to, I think my glue bottle's blocked. So I'm actually just going to squeeze that is way too much glue. So as I was saying, <laughs> I'm just going to squeeze the glue out on the card. You don't want too much was what I was going to say. I put way, way too much because it just fell out of the bottle. But you just want to spread the glue all over the card. And just an even layer over the card. I'm actually going to be stitching with my sewing machine after this. So I'm not... It doesn't matter too much if things aren't sticking 100% because it's going to be reinforced by the stitches. The glue is just going to help hold everything in place while I stitch. But if you don't have a sewing machine and you're going to skip that step, then you might want to make sure everything's really glued down perfectly. So I've got a really light layer of glue on there. Now, um, now I'm just going to start arranging my scraps. And you can lay all this out beforehand and then move it off and stick it on. I'm just going to actually stick this on now for the first time without planning. Um, I'm just going to fit things where I think they might look nice and, and see what I come up with. So I'm just going to stick the squares together like so. Like I said, you can plan this all out if you don't feel comfortable just kind of guessing what's going to look good where. The one thing that I do is try not to stick too many of the same print right beside each other. That's the only real rule that I follow. Just so that, so that you don't get too much of the same pattern right beside each other. And you may need to add more glue, especially, especially if you work slowly and your glue starts to dry. And if your squares don't match up 100% perfectly, I wouldn't really worry about it. I know, again, some people will be bothered by things like that. I'm not. And in the end, final product, once you've added stitching and the final touches to this card, you won't really even notice. So I wouldn't worry about it too much. And you can see now what I mean when I said... Uh, it doesn't really matter what cardstock you choose because you won't really see it. You can see a little bit of yellow peeking through, but it's nothing too crazy. So you don't really notice. And if you're super, super careful with all of your measuring, then you definitely won't even notice at all. So when I'm doing this to get a nice final result, another thing I do is make sure I put at least usually at least two of the same print, especially if that print's very eye-catching. So I've got a little pop of yellow, making sure to include both of those yellows because I don't have any other yellow on this card. I've only got oranges and browns. If I just had one yellow square, it would look pretty out of place. So I make sure I include a second yellow square just so that it really ties in. And you probably all learnt stuff like the colour wheel at school, like in art class, school art class and stuff. So Yellow and blue is a good colour combination that really complements each other. So that's kind of why I chose the yellow to complement the blue. Yellow and purple also goes really well together. Really, if you look at the colour wheel and you just look kind of opposite the colour wheel, those colours are complementary to each other. So they will tend to look really good. So you can see this is starting to turn out really cute and I haven't really done much planning jump down to the last line here to add that piece because it's a good placement good placement because I've already got one here and I've already got one here I've like left side right side middle and that just helps keep it balanced so I've got this print up here so I'm gonna bring this print back in down the bottom I've also got some of this beautiful orangey fabric so I want to bring that back in and I think I'm gonna put that here I think it also would have looked nice down in the bottom corner. But I'm going to put some more of this green fabric here. 
And then in the last square, I've got all of these options left, but I think this one is going to work the best because I've got it over here. And if I repeat that another time, even though that color is not too crazy, it will just help tie in everything all together. So you can see now that is the basic card. Um, and to transform it to this, there's a couple more steps. We can take, you can leave it at this if you want to, but we can take it further um, and get it looking like this. So to get it looking like this, I'm gonna take it to my sewing machine and I will chat to you when I get my sewing machine out. All right guys, so I've got my sewing machine out and now the first thing I'm going to do is just change my settings so that it's on a zigzag stitch and I want this to be a pretty small zigzag stitch so I'm just changing all the settings. You definitely don't want to use a lot of glue if you're going to be putting this through your sewing machine um, but if you did you can just wait until it dries and that will kind of help with the gunkiness. So once you've got your sewing machine on the right settings you might want to do a tester stitch just to make sure it's the right size so you can see I've just got this little zigzag stitch and that's going to go well and all I'm going to do is take this through the machine and I'm going to stitch down every little seam so all of the seams where the squares meet so think of this as one line two lines three lines four lines of squares you want to kind of make it look like those are stitched together so you stitch down that way and then you'll stitch down this way so I'm just going to go ahead and do that and then I'll show you what that looks like. So you can see with the stitching in between all the squares, it just really helps make it look really like a quilt. And it just gives it a nice texture as well. So that's what it's looking like. You can finish it here if you want to as well. I'm actually going to do a straight stitch around the entire thing, like kind of like a border. And then there's one more thing we can do after that to make it look more like a quilt. I lied. There's actually two things you can do. <laughs> so the very first simple thing you can do is I actually took this through my trimmer. Now my trimmer has a setting on it. This trimmer is by American Crafts. And it has a setting where you can change out the blades. And one of the blades looks like this. So it's got a scallop. And I actually used this on my original quilted cards just around the edge to give it like a scalloped edge so I'm gonna do that now I'm just going to trim the very very slightest bit just to give it that edge and all that does is just give it a little kind of effect that you've used quilting shears on this so it's very very subtle but it does make a difference if you don't have this paper trimmer or your paper trimmer doesn't have this option you can just use any scissors that have the zigzag pattern and now the final thing we're going to do again is, again is optional I know not everybody is going to have this option because they may not have the supplies to do it but that is putting it through an embossing folder so I've got one here this one I use it all the time it's a floral embossing folder this one is by Anna Griffin and it's a very very pretty pretty design and what it does when you emboss this is it helps tie in all of the squares even more so you can see I did the same thing on my original quilted cards you might be able to see that this very subtle pattern carries through onto each square and because it's over the entire card it pulls it all together and that's what gives it the effect that it's been quilted because when you make a real quilt you stitch you stitch all the layers together and sometimes in patterns and that's what gives it that effect. So, so I've got my big shot here. I'm going to put it through and I'm going to show you the difference. So you can see that that final step really transforms it because it brings that pattern through the entire card and it just, it just makes it come together. And then if you want to use this for actual journaling, you'd have to back the back of it to some plain card or paper because it's got the stitching and the embossing so it's kind of hard to write on but you can do that you can use it as a pocket you can do whatever you want with this it looks really cool heaps of different ways you could use this idea if you like my card that I created in this tutorial I'm going to put a link below in the description box to a free printable of this particular card I'm going to put it up on my blog so you can print this out even if you don't have your own sewing machine or whatever you can't make your own you can print this one out like I said I'll put the link in the description box if you liked this tutorial give it a thumbs up 
And if you want to see any other tutorials or anything else in particular that you want me to share on my channel, just let me know in the comments below. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you're all doing really well and I will see you in my next video. Bye!